There are some winners that we would like to announce today uh, because if you think about it, uh, week eight had finished, right? We're going into week nine. Mm -hmm. We are currently in the middle of that week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So that would be like 8.5 weeks into an NFL season. How many total weeks is in an NFL season? If I can do the Steve Kornacki thing here, 17. What's 17 divided by two? 8.5. Where are we at right now? We are in the exact middle mm -hmm. of the season. It is time to give our exact middle of the season awards. Yeah! yeah! Okay, we will run through these awards. We have picked a few that we would like to give out. You will understand a few of them, obviously, because they are standard awards. Like, for instance, we would like to give the middle of the season award to the worst team to potentially ever play in the NFL. And it was a hot, hot start for a lot of teams in suck, uh, sucking, obviously. Mm -hmm. But there's one team that has kind of rose to the top in the most suck fest, suck festival that they could possibly do. A lot of people are saying that they are trying to lose games. A lot of people are saying that this team is attempting to get one Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson. That team that won the middle of the season award for worst team of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, congrats to the New York Jets. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Nice yes. Job, Congrats, New York Jets. Really good job out of you guys. Um, then obviously, if you have the worst team, Zito just missed it. <laughs> if you have the worst team, you have to obviously have an award for the best team. Ooh. And the best team, if you go into this season, you think, you know what? The reigning, defending undisputed Super Bowl champs who somehow signed everybody to their team that was up for contract negotiation. Chris Jones, back. Travis Kelsey, back. Andy Reid, back. Uh, Sammy Watkins, back. GM Veach, back. They, they paid Patrick Mahomes a half a billion dollars. Jeez. That team was definitely on track to win the exact middle of the season Pat McAfee show award for best team. But what they ran into was potentially a lackadaisical evening against the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So us being a legitimate organization with legitimate awards that would like to be taken seriously, we have to take that into account. We can only give it to the only undefeated team. Congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah! Wow. Wow. Cool! Wow. Congrats Woo! to the Pittsburgh Steelers. One year removed from having a duck play quarterback and a yeah. quarterback who's got his helmet taken off and beaten head with it by another grown man. The Pittsburgh Steelers now are undefeated. The defense is flying around, making plays. I think they're the only defense in the history of the sport or something to have like three sacks and a turnover in every single game, basically, for seven straight games. They're 7-0. They had an early bye week. Will that hurt them in the long run? Will they be able to withstand the pressures of a long NFL season with no bye week in sight? Will Ben Roethlisberger's new elbow that is very fresh with new ligaments and no longer meat-beating uh, situation happening, mm -hmm. will he be able to maintain the level of football that it will take to get to the mountaintop we have no idea and that's not what this award is this award is strictly on this wednesday yes. eight and a half weeks into a 17 week season the best team in football without a doubt is the pittsburgh stellars so sorry to interrupt if you're a man watching this you deserve to have long great and you can do that now with our friends at Roman. Right now, you go to GetRoman.com, you get $10 off and free two-day shipping on Roman Swipes, which are guaranteed to make you have longer, more fulfilling every time you get in the sack. Now, let's get back to the fornicate in action. The stooge of the season. Now, when you think of stooges in the NFL, boy, a lot of names pop in your head. Mm. You start thinking of refs. Maybe back in the day, you would think of Alberto Riveron before we learned that Alberto yeah. Riveron was set up to fail basically by the NFL. And mm -hmm. I, I feel bad for everything I said about Alberto Riveron because Alberto Riveron was in a situation where he was being tasked to do things that just wasn't making common sense at all. He was a fall guy basically for the pass interference review rule, getting taken out of the game because of how bad he did it. But it really, the NFL asked him to take it to a different standard that just wasn't, made no sense. So I would take Alberto Riveron's name completely out of Stooge 
huge conversation. I hope you will as well. Then obviously there's Adam Gase. From the beginning, he was signed as a New York Jet head coach. That press conference with his big ass eyes to how everything has kind of unfolded since then. You would say Adam Gase was the favorite going into the season to be the stooge of this NFL season. But no, no, my friend. A man came out of his basement in Wisconsin to become the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, stooge of the year, eight and a half weeks into this 2020 NFL season. Congrats, Mike McCarthy. Yeah, Mike. Congrats, Mike. Big Mike. I love Big Mike. Mike McCarthy looked like he forgot that he was in the NFL there for a few weeks. It looked like he had his headset on, but nobody was listening or talking to him. He was wandering the sideline. Nobody would talk to him. Nobody would listen to him. It didn't even feel like he was even saying words at certain times. His locker room turned against him. They started leaking information six weeks into the thing. He obviously loses his franchise quarterback, which was not his fault at all. But for whatever reason, this guy was tasked with turning around the Dallas Cowboys, making them a contender, a team that is forced on national television every single weekend and one that we would enjoy watching but the only thing that has happened is disappointment terrible football the locker room's a a complete toxic mess and he's getting rid of everybody is it directly mccarthy's fault for being the biggest stooge of the uh, 2020 nfl season so far no it's the situation it's primetime television every week Mm -hmm. and it seems like everything is just kind of unfolding in front of him and he has no idea it's even fucking Mm -hmm. happening so that is why we had to give it to big mike even though it hurts my heart because he's a pittsburgh guy and he might by the way turn the cowboys around going forward that is not what this award is this award is just to tell you eight and a half weeks into the 2020 NFL season, we believe them. Oh, well, actually, the judges did. Mike McCarthy, biggest stooge of the NFL. Dude, Congrats, Mike. Nice Congrats. Job, Mike. Big old fat stooge. Connor. Connor, we don't body shame here. What? Come on, Connor. dude. What? Connor. We don't. It's just stooge, bro. Oh, that was the award. It was just I, com- I combined the big Mike with the, with the big stooge. You know, you yeah, but then you added a couple you words added, of body yeah. shame that there's no reason to do that. Big Mike doesn't need that right now. He's got enough on his fucking plate, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, too much, some would say. Oh, my oh, God. No. Take it easy. Also, middle of the season award for best coach in the NFL goes to a man who gets no credit ever for anything. He just passed Tony Dungy for being the winningest African-American coach in the history of the NFL, a Super Bowl champion, a man who's not scared to talk shit. He uses massive words in a way to distract the media from asking any other questions. From the Pittsburgh Steelers, the only undefeated team, Mike Tom. Yeah, boy! Coach T! Congrats, Congrats, Mike Tomlin. Last year, he should have got coach of the year as well for leading that offense uh, in that team that had no offense, almost in a playoff, strictly off the defense side of the ball. He's a defensive coach. So when you have the best defense in football, a defense that will be talked about, a defense that has been winning you a lot of your games that you're undefeated, you have to win best coach. Congrats to Mike Tomlin. Will he be able to finish it off with no bye week? His answer was, we do not care, but we will find out if his players' bodies do care because that is a long run to go on. Congrats to Coach Tomlin. Uh, The next award is for the best rookie so far in this 2020 NFL season. And no surprise, it comes from the same goddamn team. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say Justin Herbert should be up there for rookie of the year. I agree. He's played unbelievable football, okay? He got in there, obviously, because Tyrod Taylor got a golf tee shoved through his lungs 10 minutes before the game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he's played great football ever since then, but they haven't been able to win. They've had leads of 17, 17, and 21, losing all three of them. That has to be a heartbreaker for the Chargers fans, and you know you got a guy going forward. Joey Burrow, he's been unbelievable at football. They just pick up their first win, blowing out the Titans in spectacular fashion. He's going to be great going forward, but I think if you were to judge rookie on performance and outcome of this season, you have to go with the guy from Canada that Tony Romo so cleverly called Mapletron. Ladies and gentlemen, Chase Claypool. Yeah, yeah, Chase. Yeah, Chase. Mapletron. He's currently sitting at uh, four overall in the odds whenever you go to the sports books mm-hmm. for rookie of the year. I think that is a good bet. He has seven touchdowns in seven games in his NFL career. I assume that's only going to build as he and Ben Roethlisberger continue to grow their relationship. Now, best tight end is a guy who's been on this show in the last couple weeks, scoring touchdowns every single weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, hey, Travis. Travis. Yeah. Travis. And the last award, this is a big one now. This is an award that we will give out that nobody else, congrats, Trav, by the way, just showed congrats, up. Nice congrats, job. Trav. And I didn't give you much of a chance, you know, I was actually going to steamroll past it to give you the next one. <laughs> the award for the exact middle of the season, Pat McAfee Show Award, for the coolest dude in the NFL. Oh. This one was a runaway. Okay. Well, early in the season, you asked this question, a lot of people go, 
oh, there's probably a lot of cool dudes out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, super cool dude. Yeah. He likes ketchup. He's yeah. Cool. Tom Brady, super cool dude. He eats avocado ice cream. Mm-hmm. AQ Shipley, super cool guy. Plays center for the Buccaneers. We like uh, him a lot. The yeah. coolest. Lamar Jackson, super cool. Super cool. Maybe the coolest. Kyler Murray, he seems to be playing yeah. pretty cool. Cliff Kingsbury's got that uh, cool drug dude. lord mansion that uh, looks like he sold, I don't know, 15, 16 kilos in the morning out there <laughs> in Arizona. Cool. He's a cool dude. There's a lot of cool dude. Andy Reid, cool dude. Cool oh. dude. But there's no question about it. The coolest dude in the NFL is a man that we've all learned about every single goddamn Tuesday, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Congrats, Aaron. Congrats, Aaron Rodgers. Congrats, Aaron Rodgers. Congrats, Rodgers. Congrats, Rodgers. Congrats on being the coolest Congrats, dude Rodgers. in the NFL here on the Pat Magna Show, <laughs> middle of the season awards. We'll obviously do that next year, eight and a half weeks in this season. Mm-hmm, and that's really our only award show. We should have wore ties and suits, but we didn't know what was happening until this morning. What's going on, Tony? Since Zito can't do it, I'm, I'm monitoring the group chat a little bit, and, and no real complaints, except for there was a couple of other nominees for Biggest Stooge. Okay. Uh, Billy O'Brien and the Packers front office. Yeah, Billy uh, O'Brien's no longer in the league, though. True. true. So he was fired. DQ. Packers front office definitely made a late push. <laughs> they did. They made a very late push into yesterday, and to be honest, if the votes weren't already tallied, they did. you see, the thing about it is... <laughs> well... The votes were already tallied in the biggest stooge. Mike McCarthy was a runaway, yeah. but the Green Bay Packers front office was making a real late push after hours, mm-hmm. and we had to make a decision for our award show. Yeah. I don't know how other elections are going, whatever. Sure. But for ours, we had to say, "He's our stooge. We're sticking with it." Mm-hmm. Right? Had to, you know, turn away the rest of the ballots that were coming in late, which is kind of a shame to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, but it's over. <laughs> <laughs>